Hello everybody! In this video, we will be exploring how to find the derivative of a very tricky expression using the chain rule. The chain rule is used whenever we're taking the derivative of a function that's composed with another function. So here we have the function g being inside of the function f, and I want to take the derivative of that entire function. According to the chain rule, I can do that by taking the derivative of the outer function plugging the inner function into it and multiplying that times the derivative of the inner function. I color-coded the inner function and all of its associated parts in blue. The outer function and all of its associated parts are color-coded in red. The same color coding is used over here. As we see, we have functions composed within other functions. Just focusing on one part of this expression that we have here, I have this here arctangent of the square root of x squared minus 1, and I know that I can look at this as the square root of x squared minus 1 inside of arctangent, and so I have a function composed inside of another function. This is a fair candidate for the chain rule. Same logic applies to this term that we have over here. We should all know that if I want to take the derivative of 2 functions added together that I can just take the sum of their independent derivatives and so I'm going to take the derivative of all of this here by taking the derivative of first this part and then adding it to whatever the derivative of this part is. Let's dive in. For this first part I see that the outer function is arctangent and the inner function is the square root of x squared minus 1. I'm first going to take it upon myself to rewrite this in a form that's just a little bit more suitable for me. I'm going to imagine the square root of x squared minus 1 as the group x squared minus 1 all to the 1 half power. That makes it a little bit more easier to look at for when I'm going to apply the power rule to that. We still have these terms here. We haven't taken our derivative yet. We've just rewritten the problem in a form that looked a little bit easy, more easy on the eyes. Now I'm going to dive in by taking the derivative of this first part. So I, I see that these are inverse trig functions, and so I do need to be familiar with the derivative of my inverse trig functions. And so we have those written down here. I have the two that I needed. For this first part, we're only going to focus on the first part for right now. I'm going to pretend that this part is not even here. I know that the chain rule says the derivative of the outer function with the inner function plugged into it times the derivative of the inner function. So let's see, I want to find the derivative of the outer function. Well, the derivative of arctangent, that's just 1 plus 1 over x squared. But I'm not going to write 1 plus that over... I'm not going to write 1 plus 1 over x squared because I need to plug something in here for my x variable. And what am I plugging in? I'm plugging in whatever my inner function was. And so this is going to be 1 over 1 plus whatever we're plugging in squared... And what are we plugging in? Well, we're plugging in the inner function. All of that times the derivative of the inside. And so realize everything that we're about to write and that we've written so far is just taking the derivative of this first term of our expression. We haven't even touched the second term, but we will get there once we're done taking the derivative of the first term. So I'm multiplying times the derivative of the inner part. This inner part here is also a function within a function. So it in itself also requires the chain rule. If I look at it, I could imagine that I have x squared minus one inside of the function x to the one half power. And so looking at it in terms of that, I can use the chain rule again to write the entire function, to write the entire derivative of the inner function. So remember the chain rule says the derivative of the outside, which in this case, if we're focusing on this function in here, the outer function would be x to the one half power, and its derivative would be one half x to the negative one half power. But we're plugging in the inner function. So one half x squared minus one to the negative one half power times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of this inner part, being that I can use the power rule, I get the derivative of x squared as 2x and the derivative of that negative one turns to zero. And so it's just gonna be times 2x. 
all of this here is just the derivative of this first term here. We had to use the chain rule twice. That's because I had a, the function x squared minus one inside of the function x squared to the one half power inside of the function arctangent of x. And so I'm done taking the derivative of the first term. I'm gonna add it to the derivative of the second term. And so I'm gonna need the chain rule again. Remember the chain rule says the derivative of the outer part with the inner part plugged in times the derivative of the inner part. That being said, what's the derivative of this outer part? Well, we have that right here. According to this rule, it's one over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. But again, we're not plugging x in, we're plugging in whatever the inner function was. And so let's try that. So I'm gonna add the derivative of this is gonna go right here. So I have one over the absolute value of whatever the inner function is, which is x squared. times the square root of something, times the square root of x squared squared, because I'm plugging this x squared into this x squared, and that gives me x squared squared, minus one, all of that under our square root, times the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function is that 2x. Now let's use a little bit of algebra to simplify this to make it look a little bit pretty. Um, so we see first term we have 1 over 1 plus x squared minus 1. And of course those cancel each other times this here which is to the negative 1 power so we can bring it to the denominator times this in the numerator. So x over the square root of x squared minus 1 plus this and it's simplified form. I am thinking about this in its simplified form. Let's first focus on the absolute value of x squared. What do absolute values do? They make things positive, but squared, it's already positive because everything in the real world when squared gives us a positive number. So in a way, these absolute values are irrelevant because they're not doing anything. So I don't need them there. I can rewrite this without the absolute values just as x squared. I have everything else still. I have my x squared squared, which is x to the fourth power, minus one, two x in my numerator. And I can just keep on going through until it's as simplified as it could get in my numerator for these two. And multiplying gives me x, then the denominator, I have x squared times the square root of x squared minus one. I have plus my second term over here where I see this x will cancel this x squared and I get two over x times x times the square root of x to the fourth minus one. I can do the same thing over here. This x cancels that square and that can simplify a little bit more. And I get one over x times the square root of x squared minus one plus two over x times the square root of x to the fourth minus one. That is the derivative of our original expression.